the big twin is who says history doesn't repeat itself. Of the Jefferson Memorial, downtown Washington, D.C. Here on this Friday night in January, rather mild see here on this Friday night in January, rather mild evening, and it's uh, definitely hot if you're a Penguin fan after one period of play. The Penguins, again, scoring three unanswered goals. They lead by a 3-0 score after 20 minutes of play, and we welcome Caps General Manager David Coyle with us here in our first intermission. And, uh, David, we've been here before. Well, we have. We played the uh, Penguins uh, two or three weeks ago uh, in a home game, and uh, we're here with 3-0 uh, for Pittsburgh. Uh, uh, the good news was we came back and uh, got six unanswered goals to, to win that game, but uh, right now we are in a very uh, uh, depressed state, if you will, losing six straight, now being behind uh, at home 3-0 in a divisional game to the Penguins. So. Uh, Things are not looking good right now for the Caps. What kind of things can uh, Brian Murray and, and, and the team do to get this thing going, to break the six-game losing streak, to gain some momentum here with two periods to go? Well, that's a million-dollar question. Of course, we're getting asked that on a daily basis, whether it be from the media or ownership uh, or, or what have you. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's the old story. You know, when everything is going right, you got lots of guys that want to go on the on the bandwagon. When things are going uh, poorly, you got a lot of people that are jumping off that bandwagon. And, you know, right now we're uh, we're certainly not hitting on uh, anywhere near the capabilities that we have as a hockey club and what we'd shown uh, right around uh, Christmas time before we had uh, you know some of these injuries. Uh, again, I mentioned the injuries because that certainly is a factor, but it can't be a total excuse for uh, for the way we're playing because uh, we are getting outplayed in just about every aspect of the game right now, and there's uh, there's no uh, denying that or making any excuses of it. So we've got a long way to go to to get this thing back. 301-499-6600 with your questions and comments for the Capitals General Manager David Poyle. 301-499-6600. The absence of a Scott Stevens and, and a Rod Langway can never uh, really be suppressed. Uh, obviously, uh, they're the leaders out there. And you look in terms of what the hockey club is having difficulty doing right now is carrying the puck out of their own end. Is that um, a time for maybe the forwards to pinch in a little bit more, David? Well, again, I, the way I look at it, uh, you know, you, everybody, it's an opportunity for everybody to step up their game a little bit and to get a little bit more ice time. But uh, what we see, for example, in the first goal tonight, uh, Cal Johansson steps up. What he does is he pinches down. And instead of making the play uh, or either moving the puck to someone or putting a play to the net, he falls down. And uh, Pittsburgh, which has got the probably as good a transition game as anybody in the National Hockey League, got the puck up as a two-on-one, and bang, it's, uh, you know, in our net. Uh, uh, another goal was a result of a player carrying the puck instead of uh, we had no other opening instead of dumping it deep into the Pittsburgh zone he tried to make that extra play the play was broken up came back on a 2 on one bang it's uh, in our net again and uh, uh, you know it's a sign of a, a bad club and a sign of a good club and uh, right now we're unfortunately we're the club that's uh, making most of the big mistakes and uh, the mistakes are costing us. Again, 301-499-6600. Any questions or comments for the Caps general manager? David, let's look at the bright side. And, and a lot of people uh, in Baltimore right now talking in terms, and we have a lot of uh, Baltimoreans tuning in tonight, uh, looking at what the Baltimore Skipjacks have done here in the American Hockey League, uh, leading the division and uh, playing some really sound hockey. Yeah, they sure are. And it's uh, I've, I've been over to watch them uh, a week ago, and they really played uh, uh, really well. I mean, they're a very sound, uh, disciplined team. Uh, Terry's doing a super job with uh, the club. and. Uh, you know, we've got uh, quite a few young players there and some good veteran players, and I, I think we've got a good mix. And Obviously, if uh, things uh, continue to go the way they're going here, I, I, I have to think that we're going to give some of those uh, new players a, a chance to play here. All right, we're going to the phone lines, and it's Arch from Wisconsin, our first caller. Welcome, Arch. Good afternoon, Jeff. How are you this evening? Oh, I'm calling from central Wisconsin, and I'm a Cap fan from years back when they used to play in green and gold at Uline Arena. But what I'd like to find out tonight is how is Langway? How long is he going to be out? And same with Stevens. Well, I think Rod has a, a better chance of getting back earlier than uh, Scott does. Uh, uh, Rod uh, even went on the ice for a little bit uh, today to, to try it out, and uh, I'm sure he's a little bit sore, but uh, you know, I, we have to see how he goes in the next uh, few days and then uh, make our decision from there. I think our next real evaluation point would be after the All-Star break, so that's four more games, and uh, that'll be approximately three weeks, so I think it'd be a little bit longer than that, but uh, Rod is uh, he's a very strong uh, person, and he's uh, he's uh, you know really wants to get back in action. I know he's working real hard to to get back, so uh, whenever he can, it, uh, he'll get back there. Scott, uh, it's again, it's a broken bone in his foot, and uh, they took the cast off and had it X-rayed, but uh, you know there's still a break there, so it's going to take uh, probably right in the area of the four to six weeks that the doctors uh, diagnosed when he broke his foot originally. 
Well, we talked in terms of Baltimore and the Skipjacks. We head to Baltimore for our next caller, and uh, Mitch, you're on Home Team Sports. Welcome. Okay. Hi, gentlemen. Uh, David, I have a question and a comment for you, and I'll hang up and listen to your answer. Number one, I understand, <laughs> excuse me, I understand teams have to have players like, uh, I, I understand uh, teams have to have players like Alan May on the team, but the Cats have too many forwards who are not scoring. I'm, I mean, guys like Kiprios, Leach, Carvo, uh, Wickenheiser, and, and Drews have no business being on this team especially while a guy like Mike Richard doesn't even get a look-see. And my, if you can comment on that. And the other question is, with many people, and myself included, calling for a coaching change, what will it take to get rid of uh, uh, Brian Murray? It's obvious that players are not motivated with him behind the bench. Your uh, comments on those two. Thank you. Well, the first uh, question regarding uh, some of our players not scoring, again, that has been one of the weaknesses uh, with our club, and uh, we have to look to some of these uh, younger forwards to score some more goals, and if they could, it would make a big difference in our hockey club. Uh, you referred to Mike Richard, who is the leading scorer uh, of the American Hockey League, and again, I think we're going to have to you know, look very seriously at giving a player like uh, Mike a, a chance. Uh, we, we feel that he's a much uh, improved player this year than, say, he was last year in all facets of his game. We think we're doing the right thing with him as far as uh, the development process, and uh, like I say, he certainly fits into our plans and uh, probably should have a, uh, an opportunity before too long. Robert from Fort Washington, you're on Home Team Sports, and welcome. Yeah, good evening. I've been watching the hockey game tonight, and we're, we're relatively new hockey fans in our family. I'm kind of wondering, on the refereeing situations, if anybody's ever given thought to having a a referee off ice or up in a booth somewhere that can get a good view so that in cases of uh, uh, problems or uh, calls that are no, or non-calls that are made, they can help the on-ice officials. You're obviously referring to that play in the first period with Barrasso uh, running his own interference in front right. of the net. Well, that one and other, other plays in other hockey games, you've seen fightings and instigations and trippings and things like that. Well, my first comment is that uh, that has been talked about. My second comment is that uh, of all the major sports, there is no doubt that uh, hockey is the toughest game to officiate uh, from a judgmental standpoint. Uh, uh, again, if, if you were reading by the letter of the rule book, uh, every contact would be a, a foul and would have to be penalized. I mean, there is, there is this, always a degree of hooking, holding that is never penalized. And uh, it's a contact sport. It's a lot of physical play, and it's a tough, tough job. One area that uh, has been talked about uh, at, from time to time is whether we should have two referees on the ice uh, like they used to do in college hockey. Uh, again, if you realize that uh, uh, players play uh, approximately one-third to one-quarter of the game where the referee has to play the whole game, and he, uh, he has to skate up and down the ice all night long, and uh, he is older than the, the player, so that in itself is a tough job. But uh, it, we don't really have any solution, but uh, your, your thoughts are, are good ones, and it's ones that we talk about all the time. Is instant replay still a possibility in, uh, in, in uh, the exhibition games next year? No, I don't think so. We talked about that down at our uh, managers' meetings uh, this past week, and it's, uh, it's an idea that I think the majority of people are in favor of, but yet uh, the implementation of it, the technology is uh, just not there, and uh, we don't want to do something that uh, would be filled with holes that people could criticize, and I think it's uh, still a ways off. David, thanks for the visit. We said it before, we'll say it again. The Caps can come back. There's two periods left, and let's hope it continues as the Caps can come back here again as they did back on the 26th. Caps trail by three after the first period. Swing for the fences. Go for the goal. There's no time to just lie around. Waiting for opportunity to hit you in the face. MVP in a Super Bowl of fun. <laughs> America's Funniest Home Videos. Sundays on the ABC Television Network. This graph shows that your car can drive better with Texaco System 3 gasoline. In the BMW test, ordinary gasoline built up valve deposits, but System 3 actually took them away. Tank after tank, valves got cleaner and cleaner. As for performance. <laughs> after five tanks, it gets even better. People around here know lasting value is best. That's why over the last two years, almost half a million truck buyers have bought the best. Toyota trucks. 
the number one truck in customer satisfaction. Toyota 4x4's beat Ford Ranger with a bigger payload, better horsepower, and more towing capacity. Toyota 4x4's deliver higher retained value, big projected ownership savings, and a lower sticker price. That's lasting value. See your Toyota dealer. We deliver value today and tomorrow. Hit it! He's a downtown cop who's got a big problem with his new partner. This man is really smart enough to keep a seat warm. Put your hands up. You're under arrest. <laughs> Go on about your business. There's nothing to see here. You got that right. Downtown. Rated off. Now playing at a theater near you. It's the Penguins three and the Capitals nothing after one period of play at the Capitol Center. Mike Forns and Al Koken welcoming you back once again to our live exclusive hockey telecast here this evening on home team sports. Well, Pittsburgh put the Caps in a hole in that first period. Exactly what Washington didn't want to do. Now, how do you come back? They've tried the hitting aspect. You think that'll continue? Well, it's got to. They've got to start creating some turnovers and get those chances and put them away. David Poyle mentioned as we did the in the broadcast about the last time the Penguins jumped on a lead, it was the Capitals who came back and got themselves in the game early in the second period. In the previous game, early in the season, when the Penguins scored on their first number of shots, they came out and they were the ones to get those first goal of the second period and had the game completely in control from that point on. So it's vital for the Capitals to get going. Well, let's take a look at the shot chart for period one for Washington, and we can show you that out of those eight shots, three of them, were very good opportunities. Well, some good scoring chances, but not enough. No real good second chances. Not a lot of pressure on Tom Barrasso. They let him make the first save and didn't really get many whacks at any rebounds. The rebounds they did have, I remember one on Michael Babanka's stick in particular. It was bouncing. He couldn't control it. By that time, the Penguins covered up. And also, I thought the Penguins did a nice job of not letting the Capitals get those two-on-one and three-on-two breaks like the Penguins were able to get on the Washington team. Now to the Pittsburgh shot chart, and you can see here that they had a decided advantage with 13 shots, and three of those were goals. Well, you got to wonder how John Cullen was kept off the board with five shots on goal, but the Penguins certainly did have enough opportunities to get going. Let's uh, let's show you how they get themselves going. Right now, you're in a situation. We'll see the uh, second Pittsburgh goal. This is Lemieux down here with Kevin Hatcher. This is going to be Stevens, Ken Painter, but the key matchup here is Tanny right back here with Mike Ridley. Watch as Lemieux will send it through to try and get it to Stevens, and look at the way Tanny is able to shake himself away. We have a little a technical problem with our telestrator in a situation where you're going to be looking at the first goal, the, uh, the goal that they had up in the telestrator is the second goal. This is the uh, three on two. Dale Hunter can't get back. Steven Leach goes out to try and cut off the man. It goes to Recky, slides it over to Bork, and Bork has himself completely wide open. And it's just a beautiful three on two. But the Capitals get themselves caught as Johansson is down low, drinks the turnover, and you can see how the Penguins jump off. Now let's show you this second goal. Here is Lemieux with, with Kevin Hatcher. Ken Painter's in front, and he's going to keep an eye on Kevin Stevens, but the key matchup is this Ridley and Tanny matchup. Watch as Lemieux sends it into the slot here to try and get it to Stevens. Watch how it slips past Stevens, but you'll see that Tony Tanny has now cut behind Mike Ridley, and he is all alone. Puts it right through the pads of Don Beaupre, and there you've got the Penguins off to the 2-0 lead, and Lemieux scored not long after that on the short side to send Beaupre to the bench, bring Bob Mason, who did a pretty good job in that second in the, in the uh, second half of that first period. He really kept the Capitals with the hope. Okay, here we go with play-by-play -play of period number two, but first, let's check in downstairs with Jeff Rimmer. Thanks, Mike. As the Washington Capitals and the Penguins come out here for period number two, we've been here before. At least uh, back on the 26th of December, this is a new decade. And really now, the Washington Capitals will look to get back into the win column in the decade. They can come back. They've done it before. Let's go back upstairs. Okay, here we go now as the play is underway. And it's sent past Kelly Miller on the left wing. He catches up to it. Works in front, but can't get a shot underway. Miller bumped into the corner boards. And now it's dug out by Rob Murray behind the net. Here's Murray recovering from an injury to the groin and to the hip. And back in the lineup tonight. Barrasso chops it off the sideboard. 
Kleinendorf sends it right back into Pittsburgh ice. Tap squeeze in a line change as Coffey starts out. Rushes to the Washington zone. Tries to center, a backhand shot, blocked now by Bob Mason. Here's Pavanka down the left wing side, fires and it's wide of the goal. Pittsburgh on the attack. Coffey to center ice. To Tanti, across the line now to Mario Lemieux. Back to Tony Tanti. Can't get in front of the net. Johansson takes him out of there. And works it ahead to center ice. Here's Dino Cicerelli behind the back pass to Provanca, but it throws John Tucker offside on the right wing. Well, Brian Murray has juggled up his lines to start the second period. Murray was out there centering Bruce and Kelly Miller. Now Tucker is centering Dino Cicerelli and Michael Pavanka. We'll see what other further shakeups come. You know, in that last game where the Pittsburgh Penguins took the 3-0 lead on goals from Lemieux, Coffey, and Orecki, the Capitals came out, and at 2.13 of the second period, it was Miller scoring to get them on the board. Leach then scored at 2.59. Then Alan May scored late in the period at 18.57 to tie the game up. And then it was Cortinal, Cicerelli, and then Pavanka to put things away for the Capitals. So that's the importance of the team that is going to get the next goal. That is going to really be the key for the rest of this contest. Here's Pavanka at the side of the net, but Barrasso is there and hangs on to stop play. Tom Barrasso lost at New Jersey 6-3 in his last start. Lifetime against the Capitals. He's won eight games, losing five, tying two. A 2.97 average and has one shutout against the Washington Capitals. Of course, Barrasso formerly played with the Buffalo Sabres. Dale Hunter ready to work the draw here against John Cullen. Of course, Mike in that... Uh, much earlier contest here at the Capitol Center where the Penguins drove down Beaupre from the net early. The Penguins led three to one. Actually led four to one after the first period and then came out and had Coffey and Cullen score before Stephen Leach answered back for the Capitals and that's where Pittsburgh ended up dominating that game. So the importance of the Capitals getting something going quickly here. Johansson at the point, sends it over the shoulder of Zalapski into the corner. It bounces out to center ice for Bork. He's across the line now, and Cullen is pushed off the puck by Leach. The drive goes wide and is grabbed by Bob Mason. He manages to hang on to stop play. Well, Brian Murray did keep this Hunter, Corvo, and Leach line together, and uh, I think credit to the aggressive play that they had in the first period. Now Alan May comes out there with Cortnall and Mike Ridley. Of course, one of the things that also may be a factor in this too, Mike, is not only just to shake things up to try and get the team going, but with Mario Lemieux double shifting, you're in a situation where you want to try and match up with a good center iceman against him, and Mike Ridley is going to be out there now with Ridley going against Gillen, but Lemieux will center this line with Gillen and Loney. As we mentioned, Lemieux also working his usual shift with the top line with Tanny and Stevens. In behind the Penguin goal, the puck centered by Alan May, but now it's sent back to the corner. Dahlquist hangs on to May and gets the puck to the point. Hatcher's drive goes wide. It comes out of the zone to center, and Painter is back to get it. Kent Painter. Up to Kevin Hatcher. And back inside the Penguin zone. Now to the center line and return to Pittsburgh ice by Kevin Hatcher. Three nothing. Pittsburgh has the lead early in the second period. Loney moves it out to Lemieux. Lemieux at the blue line, swept away. Ridley takes over. Left side pass for Kokdahl. Down the ice in the wing, fires a shot, saved by Barrasso, and the rebound poked out of the zone to center ice. Here comes Loney on the comeback as Randy Gillen. Back to Loney. Dino Cicerelli has to chase it all the way into Pittsburgh ice. Jim Kite up on the right wing for Loney. His shot goes wide, and Hatcher chases to the corner after. It. 
Here's Pavanka. Out of the zone for Tucker. Tucker stick handles across the line, gives to Cicerelli. Now back to Kleinendorf. He fires and a save made. Rebound shot is blocked in the goal mouth. Covered by Airy, but only long enough to push it to Barrasso. And Barrasso then hangs on. Airy's first instinct was to just hang on to it himself, but he let the goalie do the job to keep it 3 0. Foreman, Cooney, heavyweight sluggers that are back in business. A former world champion and winner of 19 straight fights versus the fighting Irishman. The preacher, Big George Foreman. And the puncher, Jerry Cooney. January 15th, see two of the hardest hitters in heavyweight history. To order this pay-per-view event, call your cable system. Or see it on closed circuit TV at the Capitol Center. When you're struggling, when you're pressing, you're not relaxed. And the Capitals again have an opportunity with a rebound. See, Michael Pavanka has one whack at it. Can't get it through. Dino Cicerelli, another whack at it. Nobody can get it through after the rebound is yielded on the drive from Scott Kleinendorf. Here's a shot. like they did the last time this team fields. Kleinendorf and Tucker get the assists at 343. It is Pavanka's 13th goal of the season. Lemieux down the right wing. Murray bowls him over. Painter to the corner after it. Conti pinned by Hatcher. The puck loose to the side of the net. Conti centers. And Lemieux knocked down in front by Rob Murray. He took out Mario Lemieux twice. Miller cuts in, but Druce is across the line. So is Hatcher. It's offside, Washington. And the faceoff comes back out to neutral territory. As the Capitals looked like they were going to mount another attack after back-to-back -back dumpings of Mario Lemieux. You know, Mario Lemieux is, is bothered with a bad back. He is getting plenty of ice time, and Rob Murray is trying to play him physically. Certainly had the possibility of some sort of hooking call. But Rob Murray, no doubt, did the job. And I think one of the reasons he didn't get that call is because Lemieux has got Murray's stick. Lemieux falls and doesn't have a piece of Rob Murray's stick. He may get a call there. Tony Tanti out to center. Gets it across the line, back inside the Washington zone. And Mason eases it up the glass to the blue line. Kept in there by Zalapski. Mason behind the net. Gets help from Kent Painter. He's hit by Tanti. And now back to Zalapski at the left point for Pittsburgh. Throws it behind the Washington net. Hatcher tries to move it out. Into the corner. Centering pass blocked by Hatcher. And Rob Murray clears it out to center ice. Janine puts it back in the Washington zone. Here's Painter. Winds up to clear. Has it stopped? The Penguins score an easy play. It came right over on the left wing, and there was Phil Bork. Well, you know, you talk about breaks. I don't care how bad a team is playing, you're going to have to need some breaks and wait till you see the break the Pittsburgh Penguins Phil Bork gets. The drive from the point, and watch how it hits the skates in front of Kevin Hatcher and goes right over to Bork. Mason is over to play the shot. It hits the skates of Hatcher, and you couldn't have put it onto the stick of Phil Bork any better. The Capitals do not get a break there. The Penguins get a huge break and regain a three-goal lead. Bill 
Bill Van Delorme with the assist at 5-14 on Bork, second of the night and 13th of the game. Bork got the first goal of this contest. Now comes up with his 13th of the year. Here's a centering pass blocked by Bob Rouse. And Callie Johansson starts out. Through the skates of Corvo. He catches up to it on left wing. Tries to center. And it goes in the net. Stephen Lee was caught right in front of the goal. And Galasso tried to clear it. He put it right off Leach. And it rolls right into the Washington, into the Pittsburgh goal. It's now a 4-2 game. I think that'll be Leach's goal. The high answer of Luki goal at one end by getting one of your own. Ivan Corvo does a great job hustling to keep the puck alive. He flips it in front, as you say, Mike. Barrasso's just trying to clear that puck, and he clears it right off Stephen Leach, and it bounces past him. Two strange goals, and we get right back to a two-goal hockey game, and the Capitals and this crowd much in it. That's number 12 on the season for Steve Leach. Ivan Corvo gets the assist, that centering pass from the corner, as well as Callie Johansson. And the goal comes at 539. Here's Jim Kite to center ice. Back to a two-goal game. Pittsburgh leading 4-2. Centering pass. Peterson shoots wide. And now Sheehy to dig after it. The centering pass again into the top corner from Coffey, who snuck in from the point. And this game is wide open. Well, that's just a brutal defensive play by the Capitals. How do you let this man skate away from you? None of the forwards are paying any attention. Peterson digging out in the corner, and you see all the forwards are just facing down. Nobody looking at Paul Coffey, which has got to be a major responsibility. And I think in this case, Mike, it's got to be Pavanka, although Pavanka is down. Tucker was the man high. But Pavanka is playing left wing in that situation. And Paul Coffey's coming down from that right point. So logically, that would be his man. You've got to keep an eye on him. And Coffey is let free. And the Capitals just keep shooting themselves in the foot. It's one thing to have breaks go against you, but it's another thing when you leave a dangerous man like that wide open for a completely easy scoring chance. Coffey, 16th of the season. Peterson and Airy get the assist. Time of the goal, 6-14. Here comes Lemieux. Centers it. Mason helps this one along to the corner. Painter back to Hatcher. And he wings it up the sideboards, and it's cleared all the way down the ice. There'll be icing now as Deneen goes in for it. There's a whistle to stop play. With 13-10 left in the second period, both teams scoring goals here in this game. Sunshine Fresh in the Produce Department at Giant. The sellout crowd at the Capitol Center watching a very wide open, bizarre hockey game. The Penguins with the 5 2 lead, and give credit, they keep coming right back. The Capitals trying to cut in not only to the lead, but to the momentum of this hockey game, and Pittsburgh will not let them get started. Ridley ready to go here against John Cullen. It was 3-0 Penguins at the end of one period of play. The Capitals have goals from Pavanka and Leach in this period. Pittsburgh the scoring plays from Bork and Poppy. Here's Kortnall. Back of the goal, Bork. Roughed up by Alan May. The puck cleared to the point. Rouse keeps it in. He winds, fires, 
block of the side of the net. And Ridley tripped up trying to get rid of it. Now he's going to have a penalty drawn here as Phil Bork will go to the box for chipping. That'll set up Washington with their first power play, play opportunity of this game. Time of the call, 7.24 of period two. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Do you always change your own oil? Sure do, every 3,000 miles, like clockwork. So you wouldn't consider coming into Jiffy Lube to have your car serviced with Fenz Oil? Hello, freeze over before anyone else touches my car. On second thought, maybe. This winter, bring your car to Jiffy Lube for an oil change in minutes with quality Fenz Oil for world-class protection. Jiffy Lube. There's a warm, convenient location near you. 7.24, the second period, the Washington Capitals finally get their first power play of the night. The digging done behind the net by Alan May and then Mike Ridley tripped up by Bork as Ridley trying to get the puck. Washington power play, of course, like the rest of the team, has been just struggling mightily as of late. Poppy works it free. It's right in front of his own net. Now cleared to the corner. John Tucker keeps it in on the Washington power play. At the blue line. Hatcher over to Johansson. Now back to Tucker. Works for tripping at 724. Here's Johansson's drive up high. Pavaka back of the net for Cicerelli. Back to Pavaka. Looks for Johansson. Finds him. He winds and shoots, but it's blocked. And Tucker chases it to the sideboard. It gets away from him and now is cleared out of his own to center up. Hatcher back to Pavaka. Pavaka to the blue line. And the play broken up. Back to center ice. Here's Callie Johansson. Has it taken away now by Barry Peterson. Up ahead to Gillum in the corner. And he's checked there by Johansson. Out comes Hatcher with the puck for Washington. Brings it ahead to center ice. And Pavaka to cross the blue line. Cicerelli. Taken out by Zalapski, and Loney shoots it all the way back to Washington Ice. Well, the Penguins handling that little drive in and then dump back to the blue line very well. Pavanka trying to drive the defense back, but they've been standing up, and when he's tried twice now to dump it to Dino Cicerelli, it's been picked off both times and sent out by the Penguins. 30 seconds left to go in the Washington power play. Capitals trailing 5-2. Loney shoots it in from center ice. Ryan Murray trying to get any combination possible out there. You've got a Bob Rouse, Kent Painter combination on the point. Here comes Quirknall across the blue line. Drop pass out to Hunter. Up the boards, clear to the point. Rice keeps it in. Bob Rouse to Hunter, back to the corner for Ridley. He's chased. Now a wraparound attempt is blocked in the goal now, and the whistle blows. That puck is covered. Recky and Hatcher start to push and shove. Penalty is up. Work back on the ice. The Capitals really trying to do a lot of skating with this power play. Really trying to drive the Penguins back into the zone. Trying to use some speed to create some openings. The wraparound attempt. A couple whacks at it. it was loose for a moment, but Barrasso covers up. The Capitals initially, in the very first moments of the power play, throwing the puck around very nicely, very crisply. Then Johansson's shot was stopped, and the puck was cleared, and the Caps had trouble from that point on, but you can really see once a man got the puck in his defensive end or through that neutral zone, he was just flying with it and trying to create some openings simply through sheer speed and not trying to get fancy with it. Rob Murray out there now to center against Lemieux. Murray has Miller and Drews, Sheehy and Kleinendorst. Drews digs it off the right wing boards to Rob Murray. Floats it in front of the net, but it's grabbed by Conti, and he starts out. Coffee across the line. Centers it right in front. Lemieux. Brothers Kevin Stevens couldn't hold on to it. Kelly Miller comes back now. Here's Miller. Into the corner for Drews. Bumps on the play. Conti's there. Now Zalapski goes down. The whistle blows, and Bill McCurry is going to have to take a look here at Zarley's, or rather at uh, Jim Kite who apparently has been injured. 
Bill McCurry talking to both Dan McCourt and Pat DiPuzzo, the two linesmen he's working with, to try and see if they can figure out exactly how Kite was injured and if it was off a washing stick. You can see Kite, excuse me, Al, Kite wears a special helmet as you watch it happen again here. Maybe it's his own teammate. Yeah, I think maybe it was his own teammate, though, on the, on the check against Kelly Miller in the corner. Kite's helmet has extra padding on the side. You see all that extra white around his ears, and that is to cover specially made hearing aids that he wears because he does not hear without the help of those hearing aids. And usually every time Jim Kite comes to this building, there's a number of students from Gallaudet University here in the nation's capital, the only university for deaf students, and he's a needless to say a tremendous hero to those students and gives very freely of his time for causes for the deaf works in a hockey camp in the summer along with Jeannie Briaco and Stan Makita for hearing impaired players off the stick of Rob Brown the puck comes back into the corner of the Washington zone Peterson centers it the shot goes wide from Airy a good scoring chance for Pittsburgh here's Pavanka long lead pass too far for Cicerelli Brown into the corner after it. Johansson leads it ahead. Here's Cicerelli in alone. A shot saved by Barranco. Cicerelli made a move to the right side, and Barranco followed him perfectly. Nino tried to open him up and go through the legs, and Barranco was able to squeeze it closed at the last second. Here's an offside call to stop play. I understand that Jim Kite recently, after a practice in Edmonton, got on a bus, and it was the wrong bus. It wasn't the team bus. Took those hearing aids out, relaxed. Next thing he knew, he was at the West Edmonton Mall. <laughs> Here's Jeff Rimmer. Thanks, Mike. Three other games on the National Hockey League out-of-town scoreboard. Two of them underway as we get a look at our Washington Post out-of-town scoreboard. It's the New Jersey Devils at home, the Patrick Division leading Devils, trailing by one. Also now in the first period underway, it's Winnipeg and the Red Wings. That one out in Winnipeg. Later on tonight, the Vancouver Canucks home to the St. Louis Blues. Let's go back upstairs to Mike and Al. Okay, Jeff, here's Cicerelli. Now, he's coming from that left side and is going to go over to the right. Tries to open Barrasso up, and he gets him for a moment, but I also think that that puck pops up on him a little bit, and you could almost see it kind of flipping on end as it came in. And that could have also taken a little bit of the steam off Dino Cicerelli's shot and his chance of getting it through Barrasso's legs. Here's Kite back in the corner, takes it in behind the net. Circles the goal and starts out. Long lead pass, too far for Loney. Held up by Kent Painter, the puck cleared into the corner. There's a shot saved by the pad of Mason. And Ivan Korovo has it behind the net. Right wing pass. Steve Leach struggles to get out of the zone. Can't do it. Hatcher comes to help out and bumps Lemieux off the play. Hunter over to Hatcher and he throws it all the way out to center ice. Picked up by Stephen Leach. Drop pass Hunter. Wrist shot. Glove save made by Barrasso. Seems like after every play in front of that Pittsburgh net, they're shoving this play. This just was completely innocent. But there's always that extra poke going on right now as the emotions continue very high between these two clubs. Kite and Hunter initially, and then Corvo and Coffee. The lines went very quick to try and separate everybody. Yeah, one thing, Jim Kite certainly playing a lot more with Craig Patrick at the helm. It seems like that he was playing with Gene Ubriaco. Well, if you think that's an interesting case, consider the plight of Rod Buskus, who was all but banished from the city of Pittsburgh by Ubriaco. Greg Patrick made a deal to get him back, and Rod Buskus now is a very, very happy man, injured, but knows that he'll again play in a Penguin uniform. Well, it gives you some idea how much they liked him. They knew he was going to be out for at least another month, and they still wanted Rod Buskus as part of that deal. Kleinendorf's back to get it. Icing is the call in the Washington zone, and the faceoff comes back to Pittsburgh territory with 
eight minutes to play here in the second period. The Capitals have caught up to the Penguins in the shot department. 18-18 the story right now. That's Greg Patrick took over. The team has won nine games, lost seven, and tied one. Here, I think, is maybe a classic example of why the Penguins like him so much. You see a smile on his face, patting people on the back. Lemieux says the communication is just sensational. He's in control behind the bench. He's got a system. Mary Lemieux likes it. Then they got it. Mark Kachaus being sent down yet again to Muskegon. Instead of being upset, said he didn't mind it this time because everybody told him exactly where he stood. Looked him in the eye when they told him he was going down, and he said that really meant a lot to him. This, the, the Penguins feel just the entire atmosphere is different with Craig Patrick there. Here's DeLorme, a shot, kick save made by Mason. Played behind the net, and Mason starts out. He swings his stick a bit with Bork, and the Capitals break out. Up to center ice comes Alan May. He's across the blue line. Wrist shot, long save by Barrasso. And May is dumped by DeLorme. If you're going to coach in Pittsburgh, you've got Mario happy. I think you've won half the battle. Maybe more than half. He fall coffee the same way, and you're in good shape. There's no question Craig Patrick appreciates the enormous amount of talent that he's got. Barrasso, Lemieux, Coffee, Brown. You know, all these guys. Kevin Stevens, a rising star. Now with Tony Tanney, you know, he makes no bones about the fact that he feels they are the most talented team in this division. It's just simply a matter of getting them to play together and cutting down on some of the defensive mistakes. And as he commented a couple times tonight, just watching them through the neutral zone, that is where I see the most improvement on this Pittsburgh team. They're still going to give up a lot of chances, still going to give up a lot of goals, but if they can prevent the non-stop barrage of two-on-ones, three-on-twos, and some of the crazy breakaways that they've been giving up by some lax play in the neutral zone, they're going to be in great shape with the amount of goals they can score. Here's Paul Coffey to start out. Rushes the puck to center ice. He's across the blue line, and it's taken over there by Bob Rouse. Rouse for the Capitals, ahead for Kelly Miller. Looking for Rob Murray, but throws it to the line. Tony Tanti back to get it. And here's Coffey. Left wing pass. Kevin Stevens across the line with Lemieux. Passes to him. It's dropped off, and Roos winds up smothering Tanti on the play. Back come the Capitals on the attack. Johansson with Kelly Miller. And Johansson's shot goes over the glass and into the seats for a souvenir. There's a break in the action with the score. The Penguins five and the Capitals two. Thank you. When Rich Little takes his show on the road, Thrifty is the rental car he puts it all in. Hey, I save money and I get respect at Thrifty. Thrifty rights are guaranteed worldwide. Now in the D.C. metro area, you can rent a Dodge Ram van at a four-hour special rate. Call Thrifty today for rates and advance reservations. And that's the way it is. Thrifty, a lot of car rental company. For incredibly little. Hey, no respect. No, sweetheart. Call Thrifty today. Well, this game has settled down a little bit with 6.20 left to go. We had that spate of goals. We had four goals scored beginning with the Bavanka goal at 3.43, ending with the coffee tally at 6.14. They've settled down a bit. The Caps just one shot behind the Penguins in the shot chart. 19 to 18, the Penguins with the lead on the shot board, but more importantly, the 5-2 lead that they have continued to nurse right now. Here's Jerry Peterson to center ice. Gets it across the line. Rob Brown drops it off, and Tucker works it free. Centering pass right to the goal mouth. Played by Pavanka, right wing, over down to Cicerelli. Cicerelli across the line. Left wing side, Michael Pavanka on his backhand, puts it in front. Hatcher can't get to it, skating up on the play. At the point, slap shot by Painter. That's deflected just wide. Cicerelli to chase after it, but it gets away, and now Rob Brown and Kent Painter in after it. Painter gets there first. Up the boards for Kevin Hatcher. Hatcher carries across the line. Broken stick for Ivan Corvo. He grabs Jeff Courtnall. Kleinendorf backs it up, and Sheehy tips it off the board. Picked up there by Denise. 
The pass too far for Cullen. Into the corner and Mason sends it ahead for Steve Leach. Just under five minutes to play in the second period. All the scoring that was going on earlier in the period is now cooled off. Leach hustles to the corner, has it taken away. It's cleared back to the point. Skids past Kleinendorf. Bork takes over for Pittsburgh. And Kleinendorf's a good play to catch Rocky. And moves it ahead now for Steve Leach. Gilbert Delorme back into the Washington zone and taken by Cali O'Hanson to Kortnall to Alan May on the right wing. Checked at the line by Chris Dalquist. Kevin Stevens comes out with a puck back to the point. Kept in by Rouse to drive. That's just wide. Now it's cleared off the boards and Johansson keeps it inside the zone. His drive is kicked aside by Tom Barrasso. Courtnall into the corner for Alan May. Hands up with Stevens. Ridley holds him. The puck's still loose. May tackled by Dahlquist and the puck into the corner. Courtnall has it. Now Ridley works it free. Back to the point with Bob Rouse. Throws it over to Johansson. To Courtnall. Saved to Barrasso and he holds on. I think the Penguins are going to get a penalty. Great work done by this line of Ridley, Fortnall, and May to keep the puck alive, dig it in the corners, get it loose to the point man, and now I think draw themselves a penalty. Time of the call, 16.30. It's holding. And that'll again give Washington the power play advantage as Chris Dahlquist heads for the box. Well, that was the best sustained forward-checking pressure of the night for the Washington Capitals. The type of game they have to play to be successful. With the type of personnel they have, they have got to get that sort of result. Keep digging, keep banging in the corners, outwork the other teams and get your chances. And then when you force a penalty, do something on the power play. They wrapped up completely and tackled by Dahlquist for that holding call at 16.30. Zary, right from the draw, clears it all the way down. Well, let's see if the Capitals can get back in this game again. They have scored two goals in the period, but are still behind by three. Five to two to score. Pavanka on the power play, ahead for John Tucker. Shoves it in on the right side. Centers and a shot. Stop. Here's a rebound drive, and that's just wide. Pavanka back to the corner. Chased up the boards by Peterson. Michael Pavanka now with some room to work. Tucker back to Painter. He fires. And it's knocked down in front, cleared all the way down by Bob Airy. Well, some good chances by the Capitals. And John Tucker showing you how valuable he can be to this Washington power play. Some nifty passes to set people up in good scoring position. Again, the Pens clear at the length of the ice. Out to Courtnall. Fires in from center. Hunter jammed up on the play. Mike Ridley brings it over to Courtnall. Courtnall walks in, winds, shoots, and it's knocked down right at the feet of Barrasso. He reaches down with a catching glove and holds on. Caps now leading in the shot department by virtue of this power play. They now have come up with a 24 to 19 advantage so far in this game. And that gives Washington 16 shots on goal in the second period alone. Mike, one of the other things we talked about that, that trade for Barry Peterson, well, he's a very good penalty killer. He was out there earlier. He had Gillen out there, and now Cullen. We have yet to see Mary Lemieux on this penalty kill. With Peterson being so versatile, now you're in a situation where you can give Mary Lemieux a bit of a breather in these situations and keep him a little more rested, particularly since he's got a double shift with the Penguins. 
Here's Johansson back at the point. Tries to center it at the skates of Kortnall, taken away. And Cullen comes back shorthanded for Pittsburgh. Throws it all the way down the ice, and Mason out of the goal. Newley gets caught, but no Penguins nearby. Hunter takes over and starts back to Kortnall. Down the left wing. Here's Kortnall. Drawn to the ice by Coffey. There'll be a penalty, a delayed call against Pittsburgh. Out of the nets is Bob Mason. The Caps put an extra attacker on. Here's Kortnall, a shot. Save made by Barrasso. He drops the puck as he falls to the ice. And now a pile up, up against the glass, but two seconds still left on the call of Dahlquist. And there'll be an additional penalty here against Paul Coffey that will keep Washington up a man with just 1.33 left in the second period. Again, the Capitals trying to use their speed to create some openings, and Courtnell gets around Coffey. Coffey, arguably the fastest skater in the National Hockey League. But Courtnell did get the step on him, Coffey tackling him to the ice, and the Capitals at least with another opportunity now for some power play action. 133 left in the period, and just two seconds remaining in the Dahlquist call, so the Capitals really have about five, six seconds, maybe if they hurry and win this draw, to work sort of a five on three. Because it's going to take Dahlquist a few seconds to get back into effective defensive position. So Tucker will take this face off against Mark Recky. Lemieux is out there. Gilbert Delorme also out there. So the Penguins right now using two forwards. But of course, Dahlquist will get back there on defense as soon as he can. Tucker wins the draw, brings it back to Hatcher. Now to Provanka. Dahlquist is on the ice. Washington with a one-man advantage. But the puck stolen at the line. Here's a two-on-one. Lemieux down the ice with Recky. And pushed in the corner by Lemieux. The puck rides off the boards back to center ice. Cicerelli to Tucker across the line. Slapped by DeLorme back into Washington zone. Hatcher hit hard by Recky, who really roughs him up. Gives to DeLorme. He fires, but it's wide. Back to the point, Dahlquist. We're in the final minute of play in the period. Here comes Michael Pavanka. Gets across the blue line. Now to Dino Cicerelli. Cicerelli held up on the play and starts to push back now, jamming up with DeLorme. DeLorme felt Cicerelli. Dino with the puck in the corner. Over to Pavanka. Throws it behind the net. Tucker back to tie up. At the point, Johansson. Into the corner for Cicerelli. He's checked on the play. 18 seconds to go in the period. And the puck goes all the way down by the Penguins. No icing, of course. So Mason plays it and leaves it out for Johansson. Hatcher up to Kortnall at center. Into the Pittsburgh zone. Kortnall coming on. A shot. And right between the pads, it is trapped at the end of the period. Shots on goal during period two. For Pittsburgh, only six, giving them 19 after two periods of play. And Washington with 14 shots on net, giving them 20, or rather 16 shots on net, giving them 26 for two periods of action. Caps with two goals, Pavanka and Leach, Pittsburgh with two, Bork and Coffey, and the Pens lead 5-2 to two after 40 minutes of play. Back with more from the Cap Center after this.